Thank you, Dan. There's not another PA announcer in the game who says all of our names like you. You're the best. We miss hearing you, Dan. And uh, we miss all of you out there in the stands. Thankful to be here. Phillies fans are truly the most passionate fans in the game. We are all so energized being back at the bank this weekend. Thank you. I'm honored to be here today to represent Roy's teammates as the Phillies pay tribute to his historic career. But I am sad to announce today that Brandy, Braden, and Ryan are not able to join us today. Unfortunately, they learned yesterday that a family member tested positive for COVID. They're watching along on the live stream on phillies.com. Brandy asked me to pass along her sincerest appreciation to John Middleton and the Phillies for bestowing Roy with the club's highest honor by retiring his number. She said Philly will always be their home away from home. Roy certainly had a reputation that preceded him. Before I ever faced Roy, I asked Harvey Dorfman, our mentor, and the author of Roy's favorite book, The Mental ABCs of Pitching, what Roy was like. He told me that Roy was kind, sweet, gentle, shy, and had a huge heart. Then the day came. I stepped in the batter's box, and I realized everything Harvey said about Roy must only apply to him when he's not on the pitcher's mound. That stare, there was nothing like a Roy Halladay stare. Ask all of his victims. There's some here today, some of you too, right there. Some of you, some of you guys. After facing Roy a few times in my career, during one at bat, I asked the catcher, my friend and former teammate, Greg Zahn, if Roy was having any, any fun on the mound. I said, if I had that kind of stuff, I'd be having a blast. Zani looks down and mumbles, I don't know. No eye contact, won't look at me, nothing. Greg Zahn was never at a loss for words. Then I looked out to the mound and found a very impatient, fire-breathing dragon that was clearly not amused by the conversation that his catcher was having with the enemy. The next day, I ran into Zani in the gym, and Zani says, we're never talking on Doc's Day again, ever. We just left it at that. Fast forward to 2010, when Roy and I became teammates, I learned firsthand that Roy was the most prepared, disciplined, detailed, diligent, focused, fiercest, and hardest working machine of consistency on the planet. He demanded excellence and perfection from himself and was willing to do everything in his power to ensure that he was, he was prepared to perform at a level only attainable to a select few pitchers in the history of this great game. He ran and participated in his own advanced meet scouting meetings. He kept his own notes and even at his peak, developed new pitches and found new ways to improve. I used to joke with Rich Doobie, our pitching coach, after Doc's game by saying, great coaching today, great coaching, Doobes. There he is right there, Doobes. I remember Charlie telling me during games, if there was a moment where Doc was in a jam, Charlie would say, I don't like going out there, Raul. He scares me. There are so many other stories that each of us who had the privilege of being Roy's teammates could share. And I guarantee you, there would be one common thread with each of those stories. Roy loved the game of baseball. Roy loved his craft, but not nearly as much as he loved his wife, Brandy, and his boys, Brayden and Ryan.
You could always count on Roy's face to light up when he talked about them. The other thing that you would also hear from his teammates is that his tragic death left a hole in each and all of our hearts. On behalf of everyone who knew Roy, I would like to thank John Middleton and the Phillies organization for preserving his legacy in the great city of Philadelphia. To the late David Montgomery, Ruben Amaro Jr., and Charlie Manuel, thank you for giving Roy the opportunity of being part of this great Phillies family. Roy was a master of deflecting attention. He just wanted to compete, he wanted to win, he was humble, and he did everything in his power to help his teammates. And he always deflected the attention and said, great play by Jimmy. Uh, Ryan Howard, how he got the big hit. Chooch called a great game. And if Roy were still alive today, he would deflect all of this attention and tell everyone we did it together. In fact, after his perfect game in 2010, he gave all of his teammates a watch with that inscription inside. We did it together. He gave us a material gift, but the true gift was being a part of his masterpieces, being a part of his team, and being a part of his life. Congratulations, Roy.